Hello everyone, only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to alloy. Alloy is the process of combining two different metals or items together to produce a new item. Uh, there's several different ways to do that in Sky Factory 4, and you'll need to do that at several points in the game if you're progressing through the advancements. So I'm going to cover the most common ways to alloy in today's video. Now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button so that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. All right. So, a um, couple different ways to get into alloying. The most common one is probably going to be a smeltery, uh, which here I have built just a standard smeltery. And here is another option, which is using uh, the porcelain melters and an alloy tank. Now, I'm going to link down in the description of this video uh, a, a tutorial on how to build and use a smeltery and how to build and use the melter with alloy tank. Uh, just in case you're not sure how to build those, I'll provide that. Uh, we're also going to be looking at a third option, which is the alloy furnace, uh, and I will show that one as well. So we're going to start with the smeltery, which again, kind of the most common. What I have for us here is tin and copper, and because we're doing bronze for the purpose of this video. So if you do a search for bronze, or any metal that you're looking to make, you're a lot of times going to see this right here, which is a square of what is just the liquid, uh, the liquid metal or liquid item of, that you're looking at. If you click on that, it's going to show you all the different things you can melt down to make that liquid. In this situation, again, molten bronze. So any of the Tinker's items that you may have already cast in bronze, as well as uh, different bronze items, can be put in the smeltery to melt it down. What you're looking for is up here at the top. You'll see another symbol just like smelting, but it says alloying. You want to click on that, and it's going to show you which items are needed to make bronze. And in this situation, it is copper and tin in a 3 to 1 ratio. So with 3 and one, you're going to get four bronze. Right? So let's get that process started so we can take a look at it. Again, I'm gonna grab some tin and some copper. So if we're using the smeltery, we're gonna load that in here. Tin melts pretty quickly, so we'll drop it in there first. And then we'll add some copper and let that go. Now over here for our porcelain melters, I've added some chests to auto load those, but you don't have to. You can just click on the melter and add them in yourself manually. It's only going to do three at a time, but I'm going to put the copper in one and I'm going to put the tin in the other. We'll go back over and take a look at our smeltery. So if we look in the controller, we'll see our copper is almost done. And as it, there it goes, it's inside. So we have tin and we have copper, but already right above it is a slightly less orange one. If we scroll over, it says molten bronze. So the copper and the tin, as we speak, are going ahead and turning into bronze. Now, this is not instantaneous. It takes a little bit of time for the two metals to completely merge together into all bronze. So if you have your smeltery set to automate and pour, you want to turn that off or else it's just going to start pouring out tin or copper, whichever one you put in first, and you're not going to get the full amount of bronze. So allow that some time to mix together before you start pouring it out. But once you're ready or you have enough and you want to get a hold of it, you click on bronze, which of course moves it to the bottom and makes that the primary item that we're going to pour. Right now it says two blocks and two ingots, but that's increasing as we're talking. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and we will go ahead and pour ourselves an ingot, and I have a gold cast already set here. And of course we have a casting um, basin in order to make a block of bronze. So now we have a, block, a bronze block and this bronze block here is going all the way up for us. So those are automatically being made. So very easy to do and you can keep an eye on that. Now when you're all done, because it's a three to one ratio, you very likely may have one of these two metals, copper tin or whatever it is you're mixing left over. In that situation, you can pour out the rest, or if you don't care about it and just want to lose it, you can break your smeltery controller and then put it back down. That will empty everything that's in your smeltery. So again, only do that if you're okay with sacrificing whatever is left in there. And that's going to give us our bronze ingot and our bronze block. Now, over on the porcelain setup, which you may be using if you just want to have a separate alloying center, or if you're playing a prestige mode and you no longer have access to the smeltery yet, 
this is the only way you have of melting down metals and ambers. So we have two tanks. We have a porcelain melter and a porcelain melter on each side. In one, I have melted down the tin, and one, I have melted down the copper. In the middle of that is a porcelain alloy tank. And what the alloy tank does is automatically pulls metal from either side and mixes them together. So as you can see at the top there, it says molten bronze. So we have tin, copper, and bronze. I can go ahead and pour out into a cast, just like I did over here, to get myself a bronze ingot. Or I can go ahead and grab a cast, put it down there, and I can do the same thing with an entire bronze block. But as that is pouring out, the alloy tank is going to continue to pull more tin and more copper, refilling itself until those metals run dry, or again, you break them to clear out what's left inside of them. But once that's done, you see we have a bronze block here. Once again, we have a bronze ingot and a block of bronze. Those work very much the same way. This one can work in a much higher capacity because you can build your smelter up higher and higher and do a whole lot at once. Uh, this is for a more controlled or early game setup where you don't have access to the smeltery or maybe you just need a little bit of things before you start messing with your smeltery. Now, the last option we're going to look at is the alloy furnace from the nuclear craft mod that's included in Sky Factory 4. Now, it needs a power source, RF power. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just using a creative energy battery. But any battery or power source that provides RF power will work perfectly fine to fill up the power side of the alloy furnace. I have also put in a full stack of speed and energy upgrades just to speed up the process. But if you don't have those, it's still going to work. It's just going to go a bit slower. So the alloy furnace does the same thing as these two items do, the smeltery and the melter, but it works in ingots that are already been produced. So in this situation, I'm going to open it up, and as you see, I have a stack of tin ingots and a stack of copper ingots, and they're going to mix in the same ratio that the melter and the smeltery do. So to give you an example, I'll load one tin and one copper, and nothing happens, because again, we need to have more of one of those metals in order for the ratio to be met. So we load it up completely, there you go. and as you can see, it's producing bronze in the same ratio that it would. Take that out of here, and it's going to go ahead and do it again. Now, because of the ratio we used, there's not enough copper to keep making. We have extra bronze. We can take these out very easily, or we can add more of the metals we need to make more. Now, if you try to add amber to this, it will not work. The alloy furnace is not going to work with amber, so you need to put in the uh, ingots specifically in order to process that. Um, it may work with blocks. We'll take a quick look. A copper block, we'll grab a stack of those, and we'll grab a tin block. Let's see. Tin block. There we go. So if we put in that and that, it will work. Again, it's going to go a little bit slower, but you're also getting blocks instead of ingots. So again, you can do the ingots themselves or you can do blocks, but amber in the alloy furnace will not benefit you. If you have amber, you are going to want to use the smeltery or a melter setup in order to get that. And again, there are a lot of different metals that can be made in Sky Factory that require some form of alloying. We'll look at a couple more just to get a look at it here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to well, put, put it in the right spot, first of all. <laughs> put it down here. And we'll go into our search bar, and we're going to look up Manulian. Now, I may be pronouncing that wrong. Don't judge me. Uh, but that's how I pronounce it. And you'll see, again, we have our square here with the little swirling liquid. We click on that. Again, it shows you all the things you can melt to make it directly. Or you can click on Alloying to see that it takes Cobalt and Ardite to make Manulian. Now, this is in a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So the same amount. So if you put copper and, or sorry, if you put in cobalt and ardite in, in the same amount, it will run your smeltery or your melter completely dead uh, dry, but you'll get an even amount of the molten manulium. Now, not all liquid squares like, liquid squares like this one here will allow for alloying. I'll give an example. If we go down here and we look at redstone, you'll see there's a square here that says destabilized redstone. When you click on that, it does not give you an alloying option. Because in this situation, to get it, all you have to do is melt some form of redstone. So if you're in your smeltery, you can do truffles, you can do resin, amber, you can do just regular full blocks 
or acorns of redstone, but it'll give it to you automatically. And this is how you're going to see your base metals, gold, and you're going to see uh, iron and things of that nature if you click on just the liquid square. It doesn't have alloying, or if it's a more complicated square, like uh, whatever that is, some type of redstone mixture, it's something that has to be combined in uh, this situation as salt mixer. So there's different recipes there. What you're looking for, again, is that one thing at the top that says alloying. Because that's going to let you know that you need to melt two things together, it right there, like we did at the beginning, with three copper and one tin to get our bronze. Now, again, alloying is very important, important in the game. You're going to have to do it, especially if you're looking to progress through any of the advancements or get to the later game stuff. It's something that's pretty important, and that's why I wanted to cover several different ways to do it. So hopefully that helps you out. But if you do have any questions about this tutorial, please be sure to put that down in the description and I'll do my best to get back with you as quickly as I possibly can or questions about any of my tutorials or videos, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com, and there at the bottom of the homepage, you'll find a place that you can submit questions, feedback or recommendations via email. You'll also find links to all my videos and tutorials, links to my social media account, links to my streaming schedule, and a whole lot of other resources like the ODG store for ODG merch and other things. So I do recommend checking out the website. There's a lot of things there you might find beneficial. Well, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.